don't know. God's house might have moved, but my love is still the same.
that was very lightly looked over by number 45. He looked over and held somebody up and he looked over and held somebody up. And how many know that nothing happens unless God allows it to happen? Come on, somebody. If you read the Bible, nothing happens in the Bible unless God allows it to happen. God allowed what happened to Job to happen to Job. God allowed what happened to Paul and Silas to happen to Paul and Silas. God allowed what happened to Jairus' daughter and the woman with the issue of blood to happen to God. allowed the Moses and the children of Israel to come to a role. But God allows that. God allows that to teach us something. Uh, I'm here to let you know the epidemic has taught us to win. Mm, yeah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It, it taught us to wait. It, it, it put us in a waiting room. Or it put us in a waiting uh, situation by pausing some things. Hello, somebody. It shut some things down. Huh? It stopped some things. It, it caused order. Oh, get out of my life. Get Holy Ghost. This epidemic that we don't like and we can't stand, it actually caused order in the church as well as outside of the church. Personally, as well as spiritually, it caused order. Hmm. I get the it caused order. It put you in a place that uh, you was not expecting to be. So in being in that place, you found out that you had a rearrange of some things. Huh? Somebody, let me stop right there. It made you patient, hello, somebody. Because you 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 just can't do what you want to do when something as as vital and as powerful as a virus that's killing folk. Hello, somebody, that's killing folk. There were some folk that had so much pride that said, I'm not gonna put on a mask, hello, somebody, until people started dying quickly and they found. Just somebody across the room. I'm not allowed to say that in this place. Hello, somebody. But just somebody in your social distance across the room. Hallelujah. Just tell somebody this ain't something that cough medicine can cure. <laughs> You're praying for me. You're praying for me. This is not something that uh, really they got a vaccination. But this is not even something that a flu shot. Excuse me, somebody across the country is praying. 
happening for me right now. I feel a push. He stopped those things. And they could not happen. So church politics could not go on as usual. It could not go on as usual. Church politics, there's a such thing as church politics. Y'all think the stuff in the White House is crazy. The stuff in the church is just crazy. Just ask crazy. If you think I'm mad, you think I'm kill. People was worshiping mad. God removed 30% of the bishops of the Church of Christ, Church of God in Christ. He moved them out of the way. 30%. Drop it on you. He makes sure that it's smooth and it's shaped. 
this nigga is great. Hallelujah. Maybe she'll let me come back later on and give me a couple of days to deal with this stuff because I'm getting so much stuff in my head right now. I could just scream. Hello, somebody. So they're the perfect work of affection of waiting. And so while I'm sitting there waiting, I'm looking at this stuff on TV and I'm looking at this stuff over social media and I said, when are they going to get here, God? I had some people call me and it started to get frustrated because I stuff. There was somebody, like it wasn't no epidemic, they just kept scheduling stuff and having revivals and conventions and this and that. Some of them even called to have stuff at the church. I said, no, we can't do that, God. Hallelujah. I got elderly people in our church that I got to protect. I got a wife at home that I got to protect. I can't go anywhere and I can't let everybody come around me. Come on, somebody up in here. I only had like three appointments last year that I took and one of them was away. But see, the thing about it, when you wait on God, it's all about timing. Let me help somebody right there, because waiting and patience takes time. Hello, somebody. Don't burn. I'm trying to help somebody here. Don't be so quick to move to the next spot, because the Lord might not be there when you get there. Oh. I move when God tells me to move. I had to tell, tell a preacher, I said, Doc, it's not. I said, Yo, your, your service looks good, dynamic, Doc. I would love to run up in there. I said, But well, God hasn't released me yet. But I told him, I said, Guarantee when God said, Go over to such and such a place, you better believe that He's going to clean house and He's going to make sure that I'm comfortable to sit in the atmosphere and not worry about nothing in the world. When he moves, I move just like that. Uh, this day was predestined already. It was already set on the calendar. It was already set. God already knew about this day. That's why his, his spirit, it, it, it is so light in here right now. You can receive anything you want in this atmosphere right now because this day was already set by God because it was a waiting period that had to take place. When I pray for him, I pray to God to open up doors. I will ask God to open up situations in my, I love them. I'm like Pastor Gasson, I love to preach. But I learned to go when he tells me to go. So therefore, I sit down, shut up, sit down, and listen and wait while perfection takes place. And while it takes place, it brings up an expectation and anticipation that something is going to happen in an atmosphere. Somebody's going to leave here different from the way they came. The mind's going to be changed. The spirit's going to be changed. Hello, sir. Your brain is going to be changed in this atmosphere because you're in the right place at the right time. Somebody holler right there. So the, the waiting, the waiting, the waiting. I'm, I'm gonna get right to it. I'm gonna get right to it. We've been here long enough. I'm, I'm gonna get ready, Anthony. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get right to it because there's something else. I, I, I know Rose got Rose Gaston, my big sister. I know she heard the expectation and the anticipation, and I know she's already working on that. But there's something else I'm gonna drop on it real quick. Huh? Hello, somebody. Let's take our minds. Let's take our mind. Every, how many of you have been in a waiting room? Now, I'm not going to go to, go to mess with the negative part. Dr. My better, I'm not going to mess with the negative part. I'm going to mess with the happy part. How, how many have been in a waiting room waiting for a loved one to have a child? You, you're just waiting. You're just waiting. You're just waiting. Sometimes hours, sometimes days. Huh? There's an expectation because you know that there is a son or daughter, niece or nephew, a grandchild uh, coming. You and you just want to grab that child, kill somebody. Uh, so you're just sitting there waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Haven't even been to the point in a waiting room that it 
just seemed like it was about to drive you crazy. You know? I got these witnesses here, and the reason it was about to drive you crazy because you want an answer. You want an answer. You want, you want an answer. You want an answer. I, I'm setting this up. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, Pastor Gaston, it's coming. It's coming. My man, it's coming. You might have to grab it right here. You wait for an answer. Mm. You wait for an answer. Expectation has built up. And you're anticipating that something good is going to come out of this. And, and, and it's almost like the man at the pool where everybody else going to hear. Hello, somebody. And, and, and you you ain't got no, no numbers. You ain't got no numbers like they have you taking the DMV. So you kind of can see where you are before you are about to be taken. Then, huh? Hello, somebody. But it, but it's not this situation. This is the old school waiting room where you just got to sit there and wait. Hello, somebody. And see, some of y'all get upset because you see the person that come after you go before you. Huh? Hello, somebody in here. Hallelujah. You see somebody uh, get blessed before you. So sometime in the waiting room, it can cause you to have an, a, have an attitude. I, I understand. I understand. It can cause you to. to and crazy. I can, I can understand because, come on somebody, you've been sitting there. You even came early to make sure that you were on time for your appointment. But because somebody else had an appointment, they end up walking right in, not even sitting down, sign their name and go right in. Huh? Come on somebody, so you're sitting there waiting. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, wait, just I think I got to go now, Anthony. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, wait just a little while. Hallelujah. Come on. How many know that your time is not God's time? But God is right on time. Yes, uh huh. He's right on time. Why? Because He is an on time God. And if you agree with that, somebody say, Yes, He is. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He's trying. If He showed up before you, before you got a testimony that He showed up right on time. So look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Somebody in social distance, hallelujah, I got to get that out of my spirit, but somebody in social distance, because you don't have a neighbor anymore, because they didn't spread us out, because see, let me tell you something real quick, if I can whip the corner real quick, definitely, let me tell you something, they spread us out, because the thing is, they know if they keep the black holes together, the fires will get in ditch.
will see you. But then the Lord starts speaking. And this is for some of you. He said, favor will see you now. He said, healing will see you now. He said, breakthrough will see you now.
on a, a, the government to release a check. But God's got a check bigger than the check. And when you stop focusing on the check and start praising God for the favor,
and I listened to her minister. I heard a snap. Something that was holding up your blessing. Just broke.
need to hold this. Yeah. <laughs> See, in the Bible, the anointing went to the youngest. Yeah. But we have went on now, and God is about to bless the oldest. with some other women on Facebook. And when I saw it, I looked over it, put light. But the Lord said, read it again. Mm, come on. He said, don't read the words. Come on, come on. He said, read the fly. I said, Lord, what do you mean don't read the words? He said, don't read the words, read the fly. And then I saw you, when you came again, you were praising God, you were sitting over there. God showed me ministry overshadowing you. But it could not happen over there. Because there was too many distractions. And God moved the distractions out of the way. You went through all kinds of situations and circumstances. Even when you tried to set up things, it seemed like it was so dis it was so difficult to organize it. But God is showing that order is about to take place. Because there are some young women that are watching your testimony. Everybody has got to be in the pool here. Everybody don't have a to have a title. But what's coming in the bigger and better blessings got each one of y'all's name on it. If you stay in your lane. Tell somebody stay in your lane, you get to your destination. See, some of y'all trying to cut folk off to get to your destination. Tell on somebody, and then they meet you at the light because the light stops you. But tell your man, if you stay in your lane, you don't go through the light. And they'll be stopped at the light. That's another sermon for another day. That ministry is coming. There is three ministries that's coming out of here. There's three non-profits that's coming out of here. For women, young women, one is for men, and one is for children. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Oh, somebody help her. That's a release cry. That's a release cry. Somebody, somebody help her. That's a release for right there. Somebody says she got it, she got it, she got it, she got it. That's a release. She was not a screamer, that she got it. She got it. And she about to be blessed. Y'all switch places. All the praise, the praise team, the praise team, the praise team, the praise team. I told this to somebody else and they went crazy and God said it's for you. This one's for you. This one's for you. Can you hear me? Your trials is about to pay you in full. There's some stuff that folk told you in one ear that God's about to release from the other ear. They told you in one ear because they were trying to get in your head. But God's about to not only release it from your head, He's about to release it from
I'm going to 